Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Keep Explore. In today's video, we are going to discuss exercise 1.2 from the chapter Number Systems Class 9 NCRT. So let's start. So this is our exercise 1.2. The first question says that state whether the following statements are true or false and justify your answers. The first bit, every irrational number is a real number. So here it says that are all the irrational numbers real? So the statement will be true because we know that a set of real numbers consists of all the rational and irrational numbers. It's a combination, it's a combination set of all the rational numbers and irrational numbers. Together they are called as real numbers. So all the rational numbers are real numbers. The next point says that Every point on the number line is of the form root m, where m is a natural number. So let's see root over of a natural any natural number like root two, that is an irrational number. And uh, suppose root four, that is equals to, and that is a rational number. So we know that on a real number line, a real number line consists of all the rationals and all irrationals. So any point you take on this number line will surely be a real number. So, whether it is a, a root over of a 1, root over of 2, root over of 5, anything, it can be any natural number that will surely lie on this number line. So, every point on the number line is of the form root m, where m is a natural number. So, that statement will be true. The last one, every real number is an irrational number. So this statement is false as we have discussed just now. Real number consists of both rational and irrational. It is not only irrational numbers. It is consists of both rational and irrational numbers. So all real numbers are not irrational. Some are rational and some are irrational. The next question, are the square roots of all positive integers irrational? If not, give an example of the square root of a number that is a rational number. Let us choose a number whose square root will give us a rational number. For example, root 1. So root 1, so 1 is nothing but 1 square. So that becomes 1. Root 4, 4 is nothing but 2 square. So answer will be 2. So both are rational numbers. So here we got an example of a square root of a number that is irrational. So the square roots of all positive integers are not irrational. Some are rational. Some are irrational. So it depends upon what is there inside. So m and if it is a square number, if m is a square number, it will be rational. And if m is non-square number, it will be irrational. Question number 3 says that, so how root 5 can be represented on the number line? As we know, root 5 is an irrational number. So let's see how we can represent it on a number line. For this, we will need the concept of Pythagoras property. Pythagoras property says that in a right triangle, which has a perpendicular and a base and a hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is given by the formula root over of p squared plus b squared. Now, here h will be taken as root 5. So root 5, so 5 has to be written as a sum of two square numbers. So let 5 be written as 1 plus 4 as 1 and 4 both are square numbers. As you can see here, p squared is a square number and b squared is also a square number. So we have taken two perfect squares that is 1 and 4 such that their sum is 5. Now 1 can be written as 1 squared and 4 can be written as 2 squared. Now when we compare these two, we say that Perpendicular should be 1, base should be 2. If perpendicular is 1 and base is 2, then surely hypotenuse will be root over of 5. So when you replace this, so base, if base is 2 units and perpendicular is 1 unit, then the hypotenuse will be root over of 5 units. Now let's see the construction. For this, let us take a ruler and draw a line mark a point O. Now using a pair of compasses, first we will mark one unit. So important is how much we are taking one. One unit is nothing but a radius taken on the compasses. 
any it can be of any radius there should not there need not be any measurement if we want we can take one unit as 1 cm one unit can be 2 cm one unit can be 5 cm according to our need now so this is one unit as we have seen that we need two units in the base we need two units so this is one unit again taking the same measurement we will get another point that will become two units let us mark the point as a so oa is of two units next we need to draw a perpendicular so from point a we will construct a perpendicular line so we have got the perpendicular line at point a now we know that the perpendicular should be of one unit so taking the same unit as measurement so we'll construct one unit on the perpendicular and name it as b so now oa is the base and ab is the perpendicular so oa is of two units and ab is of one unit now with the help of a ruler now let's join o to b and get the hypotenuse now we know that already we have seen in earlier if the base is two units and the perpendicular is one unit we will get the hypotenuse as root 5 so this length ob the length o to b so this is root 5 but this is not on a number line our number line is this one so we need to show root 5 on this number line so let's see how we do it now measure ob by measure the, with the same measure on ob we will take uh, an arc and put it on the number line we need see here. ob the same measurement will be put on this number line and mark it c so we can see it again ob and oc are of the same measurement we have to take the same measurement and put it on the number line now the point c will represent root 5 point c will represent root 5 so oc oc is of root 5 units so here let's see the calculation in this construction oa is two units as we have seen ab is of one unit as you can see here oa is two units ab is one units so ob is nothing but root over of oa squared plus ab squared that is a pythagoras property so we get 2 square plus 1 square we get root over of 4 plus 1 that is root 5 now ob is root 5 so oc is same as ob because we have taken the same radius oc is equals to ob that is root 5 units so in this way we can represent any irrational number on the number line based on the pythagoras property thank you